Okay, here we go. It's Chris and Brian again, and we're going to talk about why we use uh, Bitwarden as a password manager rather than some of the more well-known ones out there like LastPass. Um, we used to use LastPass, uh, but moved over to Bitwarden. One of the reasons is they've had multiple security incidents over the past few years. Um, a second reason is Last Last Pass was taken over by a, a big public company, the, the same company that um, took over Log Me In, and they they merged with a few different um, uh, pieces of software. But uh, what I found over the years is that they just don't have an attention to detail and security, and their pricing is is uh, was not very good on some of the products. So we just totally moved away from the whole Log Me In Last Pass environment. Um, so let me just talk about the most recent LastPass uh, breach. The The breach was actually caused by a software engineer's, I'm, I'm reading directly from the LastPass website, from a software engineer's corporate laptop was compromised, allowing the unauthorized threat actor to gain access to a cloud-based development environment and steal source code, technical information, and certain LastPass internal secrets. Okay, it says no customer data or vault data was taken during this is incident as there is no customer or vault data in the development environment. So they closed the incident and then they had a second incident summary where it talks about the threat actor, actor targeted a senior DevOps engineer by exploiting vulnerable third party software. The threat actor leveraged the vulnerability to deliver the malware, bypassing ex existing controls and ultimately gain unauthorized access to the cloud back backups. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Um, so it goes on and on talking about it. The simple fact of the matter is, you know, number one, why is a development engineer unit using anything in their home environment that is part of the corporate operations, right? Um, one of the things we tell clients is you got to separate church and state, like home email, home computers, uh, they, they shouldn't touch the corporate network. I mean, they, that, that really should be separated off. And especially if you're a develop, developer and you have keys to the kingdom, you don't want somebody get, gaining access to your home computer, which is what happened. Uh, once, once they have access to your home computer, game over if, you use, if you're intermingling the corporate environment. So that's one of the big reasons we're, we're, we ju we're just tired of the whole LastPass thing. So Here's Chris. He's going to talk about Bitwarden and why we recommend Bitwarden to, to clients as a browser-based uh, password manager. Take it away, Chris. Yeah, so Bitwarden is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's multiple ways you can use it. You know, it's cross-compatible Android iOS app on the phone. Um, you can use the desktop app on Windows and Mac that looks something like this here. And you have a vault, all your login items. It also has other functionality like a you can create a secured note. You can attach something to that secured note and it will sit in your vault here. Um, but generally what most people like about this is you have to remember only one pass, you know, typically a strong passphrase that gets you into your vault and then Bitwarden handles the rest. So you can, you know, you don't need to remember those passwords and you can generally make them stronger and something you wouldn't remember. So as an example here, if I go into a portal, let's see. So I'm just going to use this for demo purposes, but this is the PAX 8 portal. You can see I have this little extension at the top here that looks like a little blue shield, and I have this login saved. So all I have to do to log into here, I don't remember this password, so I just right-click, choose Bitwarden, autofill, and sometimes you might have multiple logins, so sometimes you might want to double-check, but I just choose that. Then the password thing pops up, do it again. And then I would type in my MFA code and get into that portal. Okay, let me stop you there, Chris. So um, so basically what Chris has in his browser, whether uh, you, you can use the Chrome browser, you can use the Edge browser, but there's an extension that you download and um, it, it just sits up there in the uh, right-hand corner and you can access all your passwords from there. One of the nice things we like about this uh, browser extension is there's there are different settings that you can have to uh, for for a timeout period. 
So Chris, for example, has his set to time out after five minutes, right? Because we're kind of on the paranoid side. And see, he's going in there right now. And yeah, you can change and it right there. You can change it right there. And there's um, what we recommend is, you know, at least an hour, right? Like, you know, an hour or less before it locks. That way, if you lock, you walk away from the computer or you're done for the night, it, it should time out. And then uh, you have to re-enter your master password to get back into your vault. And, they, and once you do that, there's a, you, you have all the passwords. Now, like Chris said, you, got, you, want, you want to phrase something complex for that master password because obviously that's the keys to the kingdom. Now, if it sees an anomaly and you're logging in from a different IP address, a different part of the country or something like that, it should prompt you for your multi-factor authentication like he's showing here in uh, the, the PAX 8 portal, similar idea. You need another factor. So... Bitwarden sees that, and then that way you can't just use the master password all the time. Uh, if somebody was to try to log in, say I'm in New Hampshire, and somebody's trying to log in from California, it should see that and see that it's a different IP address, and then you'll you'll have to that that person would have to put in the the MFA code. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine. So yeah, that, just like that. Now another cool functionality. Thing you can do within Bitwarden is you can generate passwords. So you come here to the generate section and you can specify, you know, the length you want. Do you want, you know, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, special characters? You can set minimum, you know, it can get real granular here. Avoid certain characters. It will also let you see your password history. And you can just generate whatever you want right from the extension. Um, you can also you can also Chris. send stuff to people too. Sorry to interrupt, but again, I mean, I use it all the time. I don't want to think about passwords. Yeah. I, if, <laughs> if you give me my your password, Chris, I'm going to forget it within two minutes, right? Yeah. Like I, I just don't, we don't care about client passwords. Uh, I, I can't remember my own passwords. So it's just much, you know, I do remember my passphrases, but I don't remember the the passwords themselves for all these different portals we have. You know, people have are logging into sometimes hundreds of portals, and it just makes no sense to have an Excel spreadsheet or something that can be easily compromised when you have a tool like this, where I don't have to think about it. I just remember my passphrase. I use my multi-factor, and there are all my passwords. Um, you know, nice and easy. Spit them out. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. So, and if you don't want it, I mean, the extension is really easy to use on, you know, if you're on a desktop or laptop, but they do also have a, you know, standalone desktop app here, and you can use this as well. Um, and you can do many different things. It doesn't just have to be login items. You can have, you know, put a credit card in here, um, add your identity, a secure note, send that secure note to somebody. Um, let me see what else. You can all, you also have a vault. So like you can have a vault that's shared between employees, like a, for an organization, how they would use that. And typically for business, I'll put this up on the screen is for like the first three users, you can have it for free. You don't have to pay anything, but it generally, depending if you're using teams or enterprise, it'll be $3 a month per user or $5 a month per user. And uh, thanks for putting the pricing up there, Chris. Like, yeah, we don't care. The, the clients can go direct to Bitwarden the, where they self-host it and they, um, you know, they manage the server and they take care of all that. We also sometimes give an option to a client if they want to use, uh, we, we can stand up the open source environment, the, uh, the Vault Warden environment. Um, if, if they maybe want more control over the server, like we can set it up on their network or in the cloud somewhere, um, that way they know who's managing it. But, um, so far so good for Bitwarden. We trust their, their management and the way they do things. That's very, um, you know, it, it is open source. So they, they, they don't hide a lot of the detail, like some of these other companies like LastPass and things like that. So, um, it's, uh, either option is a good option in our mind. And, um, yeah, until they, do, until they 
uh, do something that they get breached like LastPass or, you know, they, they, they make any big mistakes like, like LastPass has done, we're, we're, we're sticking with Bitwarden. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, no. So you can also set up um, MFA through Bitwarden. So you'd get the code right out of Bitwarden. Generally, I, you know, I don't personally use that. We don't usually recommend that. There's so many different MFA apps you can do use the, you know, secure accounts. I generally like to separate that from my password managers and use something like Google Authenticator or, or even Authy. Yeah. Um, Chris, could, could you talk about um, the secure uh, link? We don't always use this. We we have it as a backup because we 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 host our own server for secure links. But um, if you need to send somebody a password, for example, and you don't want it in plain, you shouldn't send passwords in plain text right. emails, right? So you can send a link through Bitwarden to do that. I don't know if you if you because we don't use it very often, but it is in there. Do, do you know where that setting yeah. is? So you got to go to the password um, and there should be a shared item. I, I don't use it too often, but let's take a look. Let me find a password. You can just make up a password if you want. Just go to the send tab, I think it is, Chris. Close this out. Yep. And click the send. There we go. Uh, so file or text. But I thought there's a way you can share out the whole password from a vault to family and friends on the personal one. I just haven't actually. Right. Needed to. But you, yeah, like what you're saying, you can just send text like, hey, enter text here. Name it. You can attach a file. You can set all the, you know, expiration date. Set expiration date. It's similar to like OneDrive with uh, where you can set an expiration date if you send a secure link and, you know, you could put a passcode on it and that sort of thing. It's just another option to send passwords securely. Again, we don't, we have our own secure link that does, that's separate from Bitwarden that we, we host ourselves. But um, yeah, there you go. And then the, the, the use, the, you know, the person on the other end can, um, can see the password or, or download the, um, the the attachment. Chris, yeah. was there anything else that you'd like to mention about Bitwarden, or should we uh, tie uh, it up? Um, so we, you know, we covered that autofill, secure notes, sharing a password. You can add emergency contacts too. If you ever get locked out of your account, you know, say you have really, you know, you have no other ways of gaining access, you can set up an emergency contact from within Bitwarden. Okay, so it, 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 so that would be as if if I somehow forgot the master password. Tell me a little yeah. bit how that would work. So yeah, if you if you lost the master password or you have no way of pulling off an old, you know, MFA configured to an old phone or something like that, you'd come into, you know, the web portal here and you can add trusted emergency contact. Um, you know, for emergency access. So if we go to learn more here, they kind of give you a rundown. You can set up as a three-step process in which you can invite a user to become a trusted emergency contact. The user must accept the invitation. And finally, you know, you got to confirm that you accept them to have emergency access to your vault. Okay. We we don't use that, but um, yeah. yeah, that is a, that is a possibility. But it, it, anyway, everything... Just keep in mind everything Bitwarden does is, you know, they they're, they're thinking security first. So um, all these little features are, are very um, well planned out and thought out. I would say it would it, it's on par with the feature set uh, with LastPass, although LastPass does have some enterprise features that that maybe Bitwarden doesn't have. But for most of our small medium sized businesses, Bitwarden fits the bill, and we're happy with it. So, all right. Thanks. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.